Welcome to another episode of Follow Up Fridays. Now today's going to be an extra special day where we're going to talk about what happened across the week, what happened in the last 24 hours, what we can expect in the next week to come, and also what all the Federal Reserve, the New Zealand you know, uh, guys from the New Zealand Royal Bank of New Zealand talked about this week. Now what I really want to talk to you guys about is how your week has been. How's everybody's trading coming along? Has anybody had success using those two strategies that we gave you earlier in the week on Wednesday and have you tried any other strategies from our other webinars on other Wednesdays so I'm gonna pull up chat real quick see how you guys are doing see how everybody if you can see me and hear me in chat that would also be fantastic and I want to give you guys the link to the MetaTrader uh, webinar that we're having next week we planned for an awesome webinar where you guys can learn how to trade using this fantastic new platform that Trade is providing its clients. So you guys are really lucky. We are having a lot of very interesting stuff that we will talk about. Now today I won't go over the MetaTrader platform at all, so don't ask. But for those of you that are have, having trouble accessing it, I remember people yesterday were saying, how do we get to the the platform I will tell you how you have to use now unfortunately I'm not again a tech expert but you guys will will have to use a VPN now if anybody has a virtual private network that they like to use if you can go ahead and and say that in chat which program you use that would be really helpful to our other viewers and you will be greatly appreciated I myself I have uh, a VPN service right here so first I find a free proxy it's very confusing that's why I don't want to go through all of it but basically uh, I, I get a free proxy setting right here so all, all the IP address the port the location and so on and then I create a new proxy right here I, I go create new I put in all those things there I type in what the name of the country is and basically it works if, if you want the names of that thing basically it's proxy rotator Dot com and the proxy service itself is Falcon proxy Falcon proxy so if you guys missed that information again it's proxy rotator and Falcon proxy you use those two together but this is a more difficult method like there's an easier way that you guys can probably do it I just don't know what it is and so I can't give it to you but if you do have a VPN like uh, uh, everything under like so it's easy to use right people just install it and it works if you guys do have that that would be fantastic all right let me send you in chat let me send you in chat oh this is hmm, one sec you guys do, 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 do. that's really weird it kicked me out of the account Okay, here I got chat here. Ba boom! Glad me twisted. Hey, good morning. So I want to say real quick what's up to you guys in chat. Tun tun. Hello, good to see you. Let me let me adjust this camera just a little bit. Okay, you guys see me good. Please, how will I deposit on this and withdraw method? Ooh, that would be a question for support. Here you can go right here in the little question mark and click on the support button and they will give you all those answers just because I'm not the person to ask I mean you wouldn't be asking your your teacher how to pay the bills right you wouldn't be asking you know your professor at university where the closest park is right I just I just don't know I mean I could probably tell you where the closest park is and it's beautiful in Russia I don't know it's probably warm in your guys' country but it is snowing outside it is snowing so I got my jacket back on it is real nice I like the cold I don't know about you guys I love the cold so Chinmoy Patra hey Madeline Guevara hola mi amiga muchacha senorita excuse me I'm gonna stick to English uh, Gen Gendra Singh Bisht good to see you Pat Patro Sinadores do trade all right, good to have you guys with us. Stella Maris and Ketchy, hello. Esmoff, hi, good to have you with us. Leslie Thabo, hello. I won Mahendra Ahendra, nice. How are you all? We are doing good. I would also like to hear how you guys are doing. Nilesh Nilesh, he writes Nilesh, nice. 
Sing Creations. Hey, buddy. Hey, Mian. Shaldi. Sh Shahid. Good to have you with us. Bernard Petros. Hello. Uh, it takes a little while for the account to fill up. Like, I mean, if you uh, do a bank transfer, it usually takes one to three days. And the VPN can help you top up your account to fill up the account if there's some sort of block, either from your internet service provider or from another party. Legit. Anna Marie Palomo, absolutely legit. Uh, you can have a look at uh, the regulations. And there's a third party. Uh, there's a third party, here it is, third party verification uh, company. They're based out of the United States. So obviously they can't do any shady deals. And basically what they do, they take a whole data set of trades that a broker uh, puts through on live accounts for live clients and then gives a certificate about uh, if they're reliable or not. And basically a limp trade themselves, they went through the program themselves and they're considered considered a top tier broker. So this is the fact that they got A category. That means that they have low commissions and really good uh, execution and really good data feeds. So the prices that you see on your screen and the prices that you get for your trade in the amount of time, like say, you know, it's 335 on Wednesday and you make a trade to sell the Euro dollar, you will get the exact price for the Euro dollar at that time that is in agreement with the global communications network for currency trading. ECN or STP, whichever one um, they're connected to at the time. So basically, uh, it is legit. Just wanted to remind those people that are new and needed a little bit of confirmation. You can actually go to verify my trade uh, and, and read all about them. And they are actually, I knew about verify my trade uh, when I first started trading. And they were actually a way that I used to, to uh, check if the broker was legit or not. So you don't have to worry in that regard. Uh, a limb trade went through it by themselves. Victor Eduardo, hey buddy, love for life. Good to have you with us. Beautiful name. Sexavet Bikirov, hey buddy. <laughs> Banaka Show, Benkada Show, good to have you with us. Sammy Brown Romeo, hello from Romeo from Nigeria. Welcome, my friend. Vashinavi Sara, hello. All right. All right, I'm just going to dip down through. Hey, Tenvir HDTV, early as usual. Wow, some people are really incredible in the, in the fact that they're really disciplined and really on time. Louisiana Liu, hey, good to have you with this girl. PC Dev, hello. RIP Gaming, hey, buddy. Samuel Ayodeji, hey. Good to have you guys. Rio Orzami. If I missed some of you guys, I apologize. I am trying to get through this because we have a lot of material we need to cover. And I want to make sure that we get to questions. So it's really nice that you guys are interacting in chat. Super good to have you guys with us. So big question again from Louisiana Liu. Like this girl already. Good day, sir. Would like to seek your opinion on trades I made today. Normally, I will place order on Forex, but today I tried an option. End of day. Duration. Analyze carefully both on one hour and one day chart. All right, let's do it for sure. Love that kind of talk. Let's analyze your trades. Okay, Dogo Bigambo, Monthly Logistics. Hello to you guys. Tinger HDTV. Can we take a look at the daily USD CAD? Yes, let's do it right now. Can we take a look at the daily USD CAD? We can see that the price broke the neckline retested and then bounced off. What do you think will remain bullish till 136.41? I believe a little bit lower right here to this trend line at least of 135. 135 we will definitely get to. Uh, but we trend line, we broke the trend line. Okay, one more time. Can we look at the daily chart? Okay, daily chart. US CAD, we looked at the, the price broke the neckline. You're talking about this right here. Okay, so everybody pay attention. Uh, Tenvir is talking about a head and shoulders break right here. Uh, although it's kind of sloping down. Like, I mean, how can I draw this better for you? Where's my trusty pen tool? Here we go. So the head and shoulders right here, basically this is one shoulder. This is the next, this is the head, and this is the second shoulder. And when we break through this level right here, we go from right here, the same distance to there. So basically, 
moves. So basically the, the move up should have been like this, which would have been exactly to that line. Um, are we going to get there? See how we broke above it and then we broke down below it and now again we broke up above it. But this really reminds me of an uptrend candle. Okay, so if we just forget everything that, that we just wrote, this is a head and shoulders pattern. He's absolutely right. The break was not clean. These patterns have not been working for you know the major currencies for at least two years. I remember last year the euro dollar you know had a head and shoulders within a head and shoulders within a head and shoulders and still went up the opposite way, not to the head and shoulders. So take these, just take patterns by themselves with a grain of salt. But what I do want to get your attention to is that we're moving up higher. We're moving up higher here too. We were bullish yesterday big time from the, uh, the this candle-like pattern. And today you can see how it's a triangle in the sense of uh, we're still aiming upwards. So we're still hovering around this level and that's an indication that price is probably going to break out to the upside. So this is a right triangle. Also it's a flag pattern. Here I'll show you guys, this is what this looks like. It's a flag pattern going up and this is a stronger indication. These patterns work, but not because it's a pretty little picture, okay? It works because the, the way that price interacts with the graph, the way that different traders interact, see we, we get up to that level, we have a really small retracement. Then we get up to that level again and small retracement up to that level, sooner or later, Whoever is sitting at this level, they're going to run out of money. But the desire of bulls to keep pushing is, is strong. And we can see from this pattern here, right, where the pushing gets higher and higher and higher. And from this pattern here, we have a lot of bulls pushing up with their horns to get up above there. And also we have uh, Canadian dollar weakness. They have expressed during this huge climb up, this was an expression from... Stephen Polis, the central governor, the, the the governor of the Central Bank of Canada, basically they said that they were in a really tight spot and that they were looking to cut rates even over here. So that's the whole reason that the move is up. So I, I really think that we're still going up and you could get in from a position right here. See how we're hanging out at the bottom of this trend channel? Now today's Friday, Tanvir, this is the one thing I want you to keep in mind. Friday is not the best day to go with trend trading. It, it Friday would be the day to go counter logic trading. So I wouldn't be surprised, take my word for it, I wouldn't be surprised if this candle drops down to over here and we complete the consolidation for the week. It, it would not be a surprise at all. And then come Monday, come Monday, you believe, believe you me, we are definitely bullish for the uh, Canadian dollar. Now, before I get to your question, uh, Louisiana, Louisiana, uh, I want to share with you guys. I was talking to a friend of mine. He lives in the United States. He trades for a hedge fund, and uh, we were just talking a little bit. Uh, he's not a really good friend, but uh, just changing techniques. And he told me the things that they think about before they open a trade. Now, this is also in a book called uh, One Good Trade, but basically, he said. Whenever we buy, now they trade stocks, right? We trade currencies, commodities. They trade stocks, ETFs, and indexes. So basically everything that we have uh, in this category and this, ca oh, sorry, this category. Yeah, basically shares and indices is what they trade. I asked him, why do you not trade uh, commodities? And he said that in New York, we know that there's a lot of insider trading, that uh, m markets are manipulated by the companies that produce the, the, the product. So oil companies, uh, gold mining companies, and a lot of uh, commodity trading firms that are, are in Great Britain and in Chicago, they also uh, partake in a little bit of insider information. I, I believe, I don't have a problem with it. Uh, if you're working in the business or you're paying somebody in the business, you should be able to make money on the markets, right? I mean, it just logically makes sense. I don't agree with the ethics of, uh, you know, Anyways, that's a different topic. I don't want to get into it. But basically, these are the things that they think about. And I want you to, to also either write it down or remember, like, mark it on how much time we've, we've spent on the video uh, to come back to it. So basically, they think about who's buying and who's selling. Right now, we don't have level two. But basically, level two looks like 
uh, a big chart, a big Excel sheet with numbers and prices. So at what price, how many people are hitting the bid, how many people are hitting the offer. It's called level two or the live feed. Um, hold on a sec. Basically, the market profile, the footprint, and the price ladder. Uh, now, some of those, the price ladder is basically what's live, what's going on in real time, and the market footprint is what, is what has already happened. So we have candlesticks on our chart, but if you can imagine the candlesticks, like, like this one, we can see at each and every price interval, see 12 uh, on the right where we have 12,501, uh, 12,475, at each one of these intervals, people like you and I made actual trades, like actual trades went through. And you can see like 125 lots, 500 lots were sold and 125 lots were bought. That's why the price goes down. And then again, at the next price at 1245.75, we had 400 lots sold and only 50 lots bought. Again, the price goes down. And the same thing happens, and basically that's called the market footprint. And in history, it shows you not only the candles, but you zoom in all the way and there's like little numbers here indicating how many trades actually went through. So if we are guessing, like here, how many traders did what, they actually have the real live information from the stock market. Now with currency trading, we can't get that. We can get that with currency futures, but not on the spot uh, Forex market because there's just way too many trade and the aggregate platform just doesn't have the possibility to take, you know, the 100 million shares from, sorry, not shares, 100 million lots from one bank, the 50 million lots from another bank. And also, that's also insider information. A lot of banks that influence the interest rate, they trade between each other and don't let other traders in. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Also, they talk about what levels are most important. Now, this is something I teach you guys every day, support and resistance levels, also levels of real uh, consolidation. So where a lot of traders make money, sorry, not make money, interact with each other, that's usually where price will continue. Like, see, a lot of interaction here. We broke out, came back to that level. Then we broke down, we got through that level again, and then picked back up, and this candle is also at this level where we had a lot of interaction. So that's the, the, the purpose of currency, is to remain stable and to return to the center. Okay, I hope that makes sense for you guys. Okay, next, <clears throat> man, I hope I uh, my haircut's all right. Just double check that. Looking good. All right, just kidding. Uh, so now the next is, is this stock or currency stronger or weaker than the market. Now that is a deep concept that I want to discuss with you guys. Now follow up Fridays is exactly for that where we talk shop, where we talk strategies, and where we talk uh, about psychology. So that's why I want to bring up this uh, this discussion here with you guys and I hope it helps you. And also absolutely Louisiana, I will help you uh, with your question that you had for me today. <clears throat> I just want to talk about this because it was number one on the agenda of what we're doing today. So is it stronger or weaker than the market? There's two ways that you can see the market for currency, the DXY, which is the dollar index, or the equally weighted dollar average. That actually got deleted. Uh, basically, you can do it by uh, adding all the assets together, like say we have USD Euro plus USD, sorry, USD CHF plus USD Great Britain Pound plus USD JPY. Now you got to divide JPY by 100 because it is um, USD euro franc pound yen australian dollar plus usd and zd and we divide all of that by the amount of so we got one currency two three four five six okay we should have one more oh usd cad we're just looking at plus usd cad and then you divide all that by seven 
And here we have the dollar index. You can see that it has been extremely stable. Now, unfortunate that I lost my my uh, my other one because it was exactly because um, I had markings on it on the graph. Okay, I won't uh, bug you guys for it, but basically, you can make an equally weighted anything by using this formula. You can equally weight the euro. You can equally weight the yen. And that's actually one of the really interesting ones that you can equally weight because we can see how the yen dollar is faring against all the other yen crosses. And in an atmosphere of risk on, that's definitely something that we should keep in mind. Uh, keep in mind. Now, what I do really want to show to you guys is that See how we are at the top of the channel right here? This is really important. So we are at the very top of whatever channel you guys want to look at, either on the DXY or the equally weighted dollar average. And um, one second, one second, my friends. Shoot, not here, right here though. Uh, so what this means is that we are there, now we're in a consolidation, we are most likely going down, oh, why is it installing, holy smokes, uh, from the consolidation going down to the down bottom. So that's what, that's where we're at right now for the dollar index. So we will be going down. I want to continue down this list, but just to show you what we have on the chart. There we go, that's my graph. Exact same thing, it's just that's that where I uh, put my notes, right? So I just wanted to bring that back up. Um, yeah, you can see that we're at the top of the channel, we're going back down. All right, we already talked about it. Let's move on to something more interesting, Yaroslav. Absolutely, guys, let me pull out my notes. Um, where is the most volume being done? Now, this is something we haven't talked about, which will be amazing for you guys that are new to trading. To understand where volumes is, you can A, th throw on the indicator. First of all, I think we have volume here. Volume. All right, no volume here. No problemo. We do have volume here, though. Now, this is volume that God knows where it comes from. Nonetheless, you do have volume. Does it tell us a lot? Not too much. But I want to show you guys something. CFTC COT report. CFTC COT report. This is the commitment of traders from the commodity um, and futures trading, commodity futures trading corporation. Commission, commission. There we go. Uh, and basically, let me send this to you guys in chat. At Friday, on Friday, and today is Friday, so hallelujah, you guys are going to get to use this bad boy. Okay, I want to make sure that I come back to where we left off in chat. <clears throat> Boom, Tanvir TV, why would you retract your message, bro? I'll read it when I get to it. I'm just, uh, just uh, talking about some other things right now. Uh, so the Commitment of Traders report. This tells you by law in the United States, and the United States does a majority of futures trading, how much people are actually trading. Now this is for last week. Oh, that's right. So it'll come out tonight, you guys, right? The U.S. is sleeping right now. Oh man, okay, they can sleep as much as they want because we're preparing, we're trading. So here in the financials report, if we click the long format, it will open a confusing sheet but please do not worry. Please do not worry. It is very easy to understand. Basically, a dealer is somebody like a currency, um, uh, what are they called? Like a currency converter. It's, uh, it's that shop that you go across the street to change your dollars into whatever local currency you have, right? They got to have a lot of currency on deck. And there are a lot of banks. Everybody needs to have a lot of currency. So the reason that they buy or short 
something, and spreading is how many people are doing both, okay? There's a thing called uh, trading the spread, and basically that's what you're doing. You're trading to get that little bit of difference, and these guys that are spreading, basically they are both long and short. So that's the thing that I wanted to tell you guys. So here, if we keep going down, we got positions, how many, now this is in the, these are lots. So this is 52,000 uh, lots. So this is 52 million or billion, hold on. A lot is 100,000, so this is a million, billion. That's 52 billion worth of Canadian dollars that dealers are intermediary long, right? So these are huge amounts, but keep in mind, this is for the week, this is for last week too, so keep that in mind as well. And uh, this is the total amount of trades that are open for that currency. So majority of dealers are net long for uh, the Canadian dollar. And this is the number of these firms. So you can tell that there's only 10 companies in the United States that are 31% long on the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, right? Where is this from? I think this is from all of the U.S. So CBOE, Chicago Board of Exchange, and uh, CME, Chicago Mercantile Exchange, they trade futures for currencies, and that's what we're looking at right here. Now, Asset Manager Institutional, this is smart money. These are the guys that you want to pay attention to. Uh, they do have an impact, and you can also see that they are more long than they are short. And leverage funds, basically, these are your brokerage companies. These are brokerages that have leverage or give clients leverage. And you can also see that they're also, actually, these guys are short. These guys are net short. So it's a bit difficult to, to make up, make sense of this report, but it also shows you um, if both leverage funds and institutional managers are long, like they were oil last week, and I'll show you that in a little bit, right? We have the oil report here, energy, uh, energy, energy, energy. So current legacy reports. Legacy, it means uh, from the past. Okay, did I, did I skip energy? Natural gas products, petroleum and products. So here we go. Petroleum and products, that's crude oil. And uh, basically traders were net long for that time for Brent, or sorry, WTI crude oil. Uh, other reportables, basically anybody, any trader that's over 25 million or 5 million. I don't remember the cutoff point, but basically anybody who's who's got enough money to impact the market. This report is trying to keep track of uh, how many traders can affect the market. And non-reportable positions is everything below that threshold of you know, X amount of dollars. And you can find any kind of future that you would like. There's not a lot of cross pairs here, but you can find the Swiss franc, the dollar, British pound, Japanese yen, euro, euro British pound cross rate, Australian, Russian ruble, Mexican peso, Brazilian real, New Zealand dollar, South African rand, Dow Jones Industrial Average Consolidated Index, <clears throat> just the Dow Jones Industrial Average, uh, Real Estate Index, what is this actually? Industrial Average Index, okay, no, that is the Industrial Average, X5. Basically, it's five times whatever the, uh, the normal amount is. And you can use this code to find exactly what that asset is. Anyways, I don't want to spend too much time, but that's one way that you can find um, uh, how much volume is being traded. And another way that you can uh, use is the CME Quick Strike uh, program. Again, this is a, like really advanced. For those of you guys that are uh, doing it for the first time, you're probably not going to... There we go. Uh, you're probably not going to make sense of it at all. I just want to make sure that you guys see that this is... Um, I got to update my account. Uh, I haven't logged in since the beginning of the year. So anyways, we're moving on. So wh where do we stop? So you got to know uh, which, how much 
volume is being done and also an important part now this is something that advanced software has and I think you can uh, I'm pretty sure you can put it on here it's called market Delta another advanced instrument will we'll, we'll put that on here but basically you can have each one of these price levels see how there's price levels here at each price level there will be uh, a huge tidal wave looking thing that will basically tell you how many trades went through at each of these levels that, I hope that kind of makes sense. We're getting a little bit too ahead of ourselves. Now, what is the spread? Now, these are things that also matter a lot to us because we are traders and we make money on how much we save money. And so they really keep an eye out how much spread, how quickly does the stock move when it's ready to find another price, how is the specialist treating your order? Basically, how is the broker treating your order? And this is something you guys need to pay attention to. Is your order going through on the price that you indicated? Is your order going through quickly? Right. This is a problem that uh, I had with different brokers that I would click the open trade button and it would take five seconds for the order to open. I hated that and of course I changed brokers. And are there any big buyers or big sellers? Again, if we pull up volume, like right here, we got a big buyer, a big, big buyer coming in and buying right off this level. Something to keep in mind. And is the stock trading in a particular pattern? And that's what we go through every single day. We talk about patterns, so we will continue to talk about patterns. Now, I want to uh, take a look at what Louisiana wrote because she had some great questions. Now she talked about euro dollar reaching resistance. Oh my goodness, girl, you are the best. In my notes today, I was going to talk about the euro reaching a super key level that it was bouncing out, uh, out bouncing away from. Let's take out volumes real quick. No, 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 no volume, no, no. Okay, check it out. So this has been a huge level that we are, if I just extend this level to the right, to the right, to the right, everybody move your feet to the right. Come on. This is a precision science. There we go. Okay, and make sure that doesn't move. So perfect. Uh, Euro actually came down to this level right here and touched this level of support at 112 that we had. Now, I would be very keen on getting a retracement. Now, what do we do when we have this kind of level? Well, it's very simple. We throw out the Fibonacci retracement so that we can then see how big the correction will be. Now, because this last correction was not a correction, it was an impulse move up, uh, it's not really quite valid. But if, for those of you that are going to be trying to make money on the euro returning back, this is the key point that you want to get to. It's 112.98 or 113. Actually, 113 is actually a very important price that has been uh, used as a level of support for some time in the past. So this is something that I really want you guys to keep in mind. Euro will return to 113 from this line, but today is Friday. So whatever we were thinking about, wherever price was going to go, it's going to go there, but not today. Not today, Junior. Okay, so really good that you talked about that, Louisiana. You are on point, girlfriend. You got your strategies and you got your understanding around the market right. That's exactly how we're trading. We're trading off that level. I really want to keep in mind the price action that we have when we're bouncing off the level. Hold on, what the level was, 112, 124, 112, basically this level here. And you can see that we are not breaking up above here. So go ahead and take out your trend line tool and draw it across this, this top right here. For some reason, Unbeknownst to us, price cannot break through 112.40. And that's fine. That's fine. But um, we wait. Right now we wait. There's, there's no trade to be made right now in the, uh, in the format that we're in. There's two ways you can do it. 
you can wait until price breaks through this level by a little bit. Open a position there right away with a stop loss 20, 30, 40 points away. Basically put it so far away that you're not losing more than 5% of your account, but also put it in such a way that uh, if price goes there, that you know we're changing trends and you'd rather be out. And so that it doesn't get caught by a, a annoying little pinprick that will happen on Friday. Because Fridays is that annoying day where you get a pinprick and your position gets screwed. So please be careful. But if you buy from that lowest, lowest little level, that is going to give you the best RR. So the best risk to reward ratio. And that's what we want. We want the best R and R. The second strategy that you can do to play this currency is wait for a breakout of this level. Now, because we're waiting for a breakout from 1240 and we're trying to trade to 1300, it's not too much that we have there. So you can both use an option strategy for a day, or you can use the Forex platform with the multiplier of 200 and catch that beautiful move. But again, you see how we have lower highs and lower lows? This is not the time to get in on a, on a buy position right now. So basically, if you're buying from way down here, you're betting, you're gambling, you're gambling that this price level will hold. Now, statistically, history has shown that it should hold. And also, this peak up here, that higher high that we had here previous to that one, is also an indication that we are going to be going higher. Just this last little week, we had a lot of um, support coming out from Federal Reserve representatives. And actually, uh, Representative Williams from the uh, Federal Reserve of New York said that we are probably not going to be rate lowering interest rates and that we are trying to stay positive and that the bond yield curve, you know, that thing that I showed you guys yesterday, the bond yield curve, the negativity of it, does not necessarily mean that we will be in a recession. Okay, see how we dip down below the negative territory? Now, when did this happen last? It happened last in 2007, right before the crash. So something to keep in mind there. Now, before I go on to your next question, wow, you guys have been really going ham in chat. So let me leave questions towards the end. Uh, we are coming close to the end, and I didn't even get through half of what I wanted to tell you guys. So uh, let's talk about, so virtual private network, for those of you that really want to uh, top up your MetaTrader account and you can't, uh, we talked about the trading principles of a, uh, of a prop firm, prop trading firm. Also, let's talk about what's going on with the world stock market. Here we have the VEU, which is the uh, All World Index Fund without the United States. Uh, it also looks like it's bouncing up, 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 and up, and we are hanging around the 200 EMA. This is the stock market of the rest of the world, not including the USA. Now, the ACWI, All World Composite, uh, All, All World Composite, no, sorry, uh, it is... Uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, Capital International, All World Composite Index. This is the world stock market, including the United States. So you can see that when we add the United States to the equation, we end up doing a lot better. So my indication is that the U.S., even though the fact that they're struggling to keep above this level, I thought we would drop down lower, and we didn't. So obviously there is interest from buyers that we do not drop lower. So come Monday, we could retake this level of 284, which gives you a good $5,000 difference, right? This is this adds another zero. The actual index is at 2,884. Is it though? I want to make sure I know what I'm talking about. So here we have the S&P 500. Yeah, so another zero. 28,000, sorry, 2,815 is the actual price of the index right here. Finviz, great tool, you guys. Really recommend using it. And one thing that I do every day is I read briefing. Um, briefing. Com. So if you want to get your good news, you can do it right here. Briefing.com has the best market news. Hands down, you can log in for free 
to that account. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to your questions. I think I think that's a better use of our time. I wanted to talk about trade wars. I wanted to talk about China slowing down. I wanted to talk about breakthroughs that they've had. Now, for those of you that don't know, the this week we had Donald Trump come out or his administration come out and say that we are keen on lowering tariffs. Right now there's a 10% tariff on all Chinese goods, but currently we're not going to take off those tariffs until China honors their word for what they're going to do. And their word was really difficult. They're going to value or they're going to uphold international copyright laws and buy more U.S. goods. Well, now there's been headway that uh, there's there was breakthroughs in forced technology transfer. Before, this is how China got so good, guys. They, by law, required companies that would make products in their country because of the cheap labor. They would require them to forcefully transfer the information on how to make whatever technology they were making. So basically, they said that we would copy uh, your schematics and then allow this would allow for better product creation. But what they actually did was steal that information, close up shop, and go open their own company. Now, there has been breakthroughs in that. What kind of breakthroughs? We don't know, but basically any kind of new European country or US country is not going to be required to give that information, to trade, to give their trade secrets when they're making products in China. And the next thing is that data centers will be allowed in China. So basically, you can make your, uh, if you're producing, if you're producing in China, you can make your own uh, data center where you will keep your data safe. Now you can see that here we have this little level that we actually broke out of. So this is really interesting and keen that we have this level and uh, the Chinese Yuan is gaining strength. Today has been a totally down day. Uh, so, But this is what I want you guys to keep in mind that the Chinese Yuan has finished its strengthening and for some reason the US dollar is now gaining strength. Now I want to go on to Louisiana's question. Next is USDCHF. Let's look at USDCHF. So USDCHF at the at the moment on the one hour time frame, there's a long shadow red doji are pushing down the sale. What will confirm that the trend is down? Nothing. I'm not looking for a downtrend. I'm looking only for an uptrend. And this big old candle confirms that. This is an engulfing candle. Go long. If we stick around here and we break through this level, go long all the way to a dollar to break even, to uh, parity. Parity is the right word. See how we were first hanging out around this trend line? And now we're not hanging around that trend line? That means now we have a new trend line. Now we're looking like this. Okay, that's an increase in speed, that's an increase in volatility, and an increase in, in sentiment. So people are now a lot more uh, dollar bullish. And uh, so don't go short. Yeah, it's not a trend down. Louisiana, even, even if we zoom out, we're, we're not trending down. We're not looking for a trend down. This is a, a trend up. And the main thing that we have here, you guys, look at this trend from here, starting all the way from here. Going to here. This is a right triangle, and this means that we're, you know, talk, talk, knock, 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 trying to get up above that level there. So when we break that level, right, we're going up. It'll be a break retest, and then going up here. And this is a lot of a, a lot of space to move. Oops. I just want to see how how long this this has been a level, right? This is a huge level, guys. Take a look. Here it was support, or sorry, yeah, support. Here it was resistance, back to support again. Then we broke through it, and uh, yeah, so really important level actually. Put this on your chart, ninety nine sixty eight. Really important level. Kathy Carrillo, hey, I think I remember you. Is this your first time with us? Tenvir GTV pound yen. Of course, I still remember. BBP, JPY. 
Ja. Whoa. So basically, this is one of the trades that one of our traders, Tenvirage DTV, shouted out in chat. He said, hey, look, we're just breaking through the level. We broke through it. We came back to it. And now we're starting the consolidation down. Not consolidation. The move down. And there's a lot. See, when we pass this level here, there's a long way down. So guys, please keep track of this currency pair because it is really, really important because when the pound falls more, we are definitely going to see that uh, happening. Now, because it's Friday, because we're at the end of the day, keep in mind that on Monday, Tuesday, price can shoot back up into this, this consolidation. This little square that we have here, this little chubby square, we're going to come back into it quite a bit. So don't think that we're, we're getting off here. The pound is slowly but surely edging close to the gap that it created on Brexit at 136. And no matter what the outcome of Brexit is, the pound is going to find its footing even after a huge fall. Even if there's a no deal Brexit, there's a huge fall, we're still going to find our footing and climb back up. Hey, Demilola Fadia, good to have you with us. You're new here. That's great. Uh, Samuel Donker, do you think the German unemployment rate can affect it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, now, it wasn't as negative as pre um, uh, predicted. So actually, this was quite uh, good for the euro, but despite that, the euro keeps falling. So this is um, this is an issue that we could have the euro actually break through this level. And see how we have three red candles in in a row. The ultimate level of support is here at 112, like all the way to 112 and below. So I mean, if we get another like little candle prick, but I think it'll be somewhere between here that we prick down and then reverse back up. And the first point of reversal will be 113. Wasu, my man, good to see you once again. Lu Peng, making friends. Rawlings, I just discovered a limb trade. Wants to know if I can access the platform from Cameroon, Africa. I believe all African countries have the platform, so yes. Samuel Danker, yes, it usually affects the currency. Ooh, I like it. People are becoming really confident and expert-like. Liu, from my end here, I'm seeing the hanging mans and shooting star, not dojis. The window gap between 28th of March and 23rd of 28th of March tells me it continues downtrend. Let's hear from Mr. Brachenko. So I think we touched on both currencies. Uh, good morning, guys. Good morning, Glammy Twisted. Yeah, so this link that I sent you guys, that's for uh, Tuesday's uh, Tuesday's webinar. Make sure you guys come if you want to learn how to use the MetaTrader platform. Hey everyone, couldn't make it yesterday. Hope everyone was kicking out there. This weekend market is, yeah. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it's too bad. Just don't touch the currencies that don't make sense, right? Don't touch the pound. Makes no sense. Trade the, uh, trade the yen. Trade the Canadian. I don't think so, Dammy. Hi from Malaysia, Arsad. Good to have you with us. Then that means I can't trade for Nigeria. Yeah, you can. We have our uh, we have a representative office in Nigeria. Like, take a look at this, guys. You can you can call and ask any of your questions that you have from Nigeria. I must confess. Now, monthly logistics. My experience before I was not just patient to see results. This week, my practice has proved me wrong. Exactly, patience, patience. It is a super important quality. And actually, you guys, this is the thing. As you become a more patient person, you become a more patient trader. And as you become a more patient trader, you become a more patient person. They go hand in hand, and trading has really changed me. It will make you a better person, I guarantee it, you guys. You can read their policy to confirm there are other Nigerians here who already have accounts, damn it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. We have a lot of um, traders from Nigeria. Good morning, I am Josh from Nigeria. I remember I mailed you and you booked me next week, Monday. What? <laughs> Maybe that's somebody else. Is does it, is anybody in contact with Joshua? Because uh, I, I didn't get any email, nor do I want to get any email. I have so much uh, an, an analyst from uh, from all over the world that analysis that I don't really want any any other email. Lopang Kopanang, 
CHFJPY going to continue up? Let's have a look. CHFJPY. Come on, Russian, turn off CHFJPY. Okay, don't like. Don't mess with me. I want my Swiss franc and Japanese yen. Yeah, this would be one of those currencies that I'm, I don't want to trade. This is going nowhere. All year this year has gone absolutely nowhere. I do not recommend trading it at all right now. What do we have here? Nothing. Where are we going to break out? Who knows? Where are we going to break out? God only knows. Right? I mean, come on. This, this is my analysis of the currency pair right here. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I don't see where this could go. We are right in the middle, right in the middle of a channel. It can go anywhere. Plus today is Friday, low pink opening. Uh, I recommend you get out when you break even. Again, trading is not gambling. We don't want to look at a graph and be like, maybe it'll go up. We want to look at a graph and say, okay, we have confirmation from trend line. We have the RSI breaking out through overbought into oversold. We have fundamentally the Japanese coming through with some strength and the Swiss franc with some weakness. And also we have confirmation since the euro market is doing well. Well, the Swiss franc is very closely tied to the euro market, right? They're in the euro zone. So they must be doing well too. Okay, so those are three, four, five confirmations that we want to open up a trade. Now, is this a great trade? Yeah, it's an amazing trade. Okay, that's how you want to trade. That's what you want to take. You don't want to take this crap of like, is it going to go up? Or is it not? Is you is or is you ain't gonna give me a ride? Is that you with the Lamborghini? Is that your park parked outside? So basically, that's not what we want to do. Okay, we want to have real serious confirmation for any trade. This is your money. You know, you're putting your money on these little lines and bars and graphs and and indicators and you know news that you're reading. Do you really want to make that bet? I don't want to make that bet. GDP of UK in about 15. What's your intake, guys? All right, let's have a let's have a some input in chat. What's your take? Oh, it already came out. <clears throat> man, I gotta read chat faster. I'm spending a lot of time. I'm late but not tired. Oh my man, Sarah Sarima. Good to have you with us, man. Good evening. So yeah, GDP rose a little bit. We also had GDP from the U.S. come out, which was uh, a little bit lower, but it grew. Like this is the thing, even though GDP was negative in the U.S. yesterday, the dollar grew. So what do you make of that in chat, you guys? Does that make sense? But that's something that I, I want you to keep in mind. Interest rate decisions and GDP figures are not 100% guaranteeing you a trade on the news trade. So it's always important, if you're trading on the news, to use stop losses. All right, you guys. Pound dollar, Kago Jane, I'm going to tell you, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch the pound. There's no reason to trade the pound because there's no trade. There's no conviction. You can buy the pound right now because it could go up, but it could also not go up. Why would you take that bet? Like, what does this tell you? Nothing. This is a whole bunch of craziness. Because this movement up was uncalled for, right? I was shorting here. I got in short and then I broke even. And then for some reason, the pound grew for three months during a crazy time where they couldn't negotiate with the European Union. So not something that makes sense. As soon as we have something that does go through, then we can open positions. And keep in mind, even then, the positions are going to be like this. They're going to be volatile and cyclical. All right, Precious Angel, you don't understand anything? Come to a few more lessons, it will start to make sense. Come to a few more lessons because I try to combine really advanced uh, strategies with really uh, basic principles so that you can build upon your knowledge and become better every day. Every day we become a little bit better. And Philip from Ghana, Philip, what's up, man? Best currency to trade is the one that you like the most, that you feel you understand the best, and that you have the best access to news with. So if you understand European news, trade the news. But if you understand the South African Rand, trade the South African Rand, right? We have that currency on our platform.
All right, you guys, I like that you're chatting in chat. Love your confidence. So did you imply that Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are probably good for trading? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday is really good. Sometimes Monday, if we have a continuation. Now, Mondays, if you're trading Monday, it's very good for you to uh, trade the gap on the euro, right? On the euro, it's super good to trade the gap. I wanted to show you guys the... Uh, South African Rand, do we have it? No. Singapore dollar, Norwegian krone. Doesn't look like we have the Rand. 10 viewers DTV, odd CAD. Let's have a look at odd CAD, A U D C A D. You guys, I'm gonna start to wrap it up, so no more questions for today. <clears throat> yeah, again, this reminds me a lot of the um, now the, the currency pairs that don't move a lot and the reason is that they are very closely tied to their economic structure is the franc and yen. So the Swiss franc and the Japanese yen, they are both uh, really heavy exporting country. They import clean money and that devalues their currency. That's why they have negative interest rates is because historically they have too much import of currency, uh, whether it's uh, investments or whether it's uh, selling their product like the Japan, uh, like Japan does. Uh, they move exactly the same. They're both risk currencies, so the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc, and they both have negative interest rates. There's not a lot of movement. Same thing for the Australian dollar and Canadian dollar. They are both... Uh, commodity asset classes and uh, and the Bank of Canada and Royal Bank of New Zealand and Royal uh, or, or, uh, Bank of Australia Royal Bank of Australia they all have the same also uh, almost the same Royal Bank of Australia interest rate is 150 but uh, Royal Bank of New Zealand is 175 just like Canada is also 175 so again when we have this you know even if you're trading within a um, within a channel do you see how small the movement is if we slap on the ATR here here let's get rid of this average true range you know it's less than a penny right now so throughout the day the price moves less than one penny. What? Does that, does that, you know, that's not good. I, there's nothing to be had here. Unless one of them raises or lowers interest rates or one of them changes their monetary policy, there's not a lot to be had here. So I don't really get why you want to be trading. Okay, I think we can sell a stop loss 95.55. Take profit ninety four forty. Okay, let me drop down. Okay, ninety five fifty five. Okay, he wants to sell from here. Wow, even higher. You want to sell from here? Take profit ninety four forty. No, man, that's wishful thinking. That's wishful thinking, Tenbeer. That's really good that you have these ideas, but really it's wishful thinking. It's not going to happen. Like, I mean, first of all, this looks more, more bullish than anything. Yeah, I don't, I don't see a trade here, nor do I like it. Like, it's, it makes no sense when it's, when it's trading. Right? Like, what is this? What is this right here? Anyways, okay, so the, uh, I, I entertained the thought. We can see the head and shoulders at 61.8 fib or holding. I was waiting for four hours wick to fill, and I see it will go well. Well, maybe, maybe. We do have a head and shoulders pattern here on the four hour time frame. Just like we had a head and shoulders here. Just like we had a head and shoulders here, 
just like we had a head and shoulders here, just like we have a head and shoulders here, or a normal head and shoulders, right? These are all reverse head and shoulders. This is a, you know, regular head and shoulders, just like a head and shoulders here, just like a head and shoulders here, just like a, you know, a little head and shoulders right here, and then a reverse double top here, and then a head and shoulders, you know, see, do you see my point? I don't know, man. I don't know. It's just a bunch of head and shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that makes sense, right? I just don't like it because there's not enough movement, and definitely not enough, uh, you know, continuation. You're probably right. We probably will drop down. I just, I don't specialize in these kind of currencies, so I can't really uh, confirm or de uh, dissuade you in that regard. Please provide contact of a limb trade support for India, India-based trader. Let's have a look who we have in India. So South Africa, India. Here we go, buddy. So go ahead and look on my screen. This is for Mr. Amitabh Kodhuri. Tanvir, do you also trade USD JPY? Yeah, he trades in everything, as you can see. Tanvir TV is a trading machine. I love that you mentioned that in chat, and we got a chance to talk about currencies that are very, very correlated. So the Canadian dollar, and if we look at it, the Canadian dollar and the Australian dollar. And the Australian dollar are very, very correlated. You see that? They are very, very correlated. So they move the exact same. That's why you wouldn't really want to trade super correlated things and same thing with the euro and the franc and the franc yen uh, euro and franc are reverse correlated by the way <clears throat> what do you mean brokers do we have brokers with the limb trade no bro uh, a limb trade is your broker he, that is a brokerage company that's what i meant by that when you start making money on a limb trade options they also delay your trade execution for up to six seconds really i've never had that before Uh, again, don't take uh, somebody's word for it. It could be different. It could be the same, but you can always check that um, yourself. How do I get on a limp trade platform? It is metatrader at a limp trade.com. So I'll send you guys the link for the metatrader. One sec. Oh, and my umbasi. What's up, bro? Coming late, but nonetheless, you came. Good to see you. Hey, buddy. Hey there, please provide. Okay, so I got you that contact information, right? Uh, I got you the, uh, send the link, sir, again. Glad me twisted. Which link? Which link, honey? Anyways, I hope I answered you guys' question. We are right on the money. It is time to go. So you guys now know some things that happened this week. You got some new tools that you can use. Also, I taught you about commitment of traders report which shows you sentiment and we went through a list of what professional traders at hedge funds excuse me at prop funds proprietary trading funds go through before they open a trade and we took a look at the fundamental atmosphere of what's going on in the world discussed a little bit about China and uh, remember if you can't access the MetaTrader platform you can use a VPN, a virtual private network. My name is Yaroslav. This has been Follow Up Fridays. I wish you guys good luck trading out there. Come back on Monday where we will plan our day and see what's going to happen and how we can make money on the week ahead. All right, you guys, have fun. Have an awesome weekend. And my homework for you guys for today is make sure to watch the TV show Billions. They came out with season four i believe season four and the first two episodes are radical i love it basically it is one of the best tv shows to motivate you to learn to trade better all right you guys my name is yaroslav you guys rock i love each and every one of you thank you for coming today see you on monday peace